Hello everyone. In this part, we're going to start applying the transactions into the journal, or in other words, recording the transactions in the journal. Again, as I said before, the journal process or recording in the journal is called journalizing. And we're going to apply the exact same transactions that we had in chapter one, but we're going to apply them using the accounting language, using debit and credit. So we're going to journalize these transactions in the journal. So let's see the first transaction here, transaction A. On November 1st, Chris Clark deposited $25,000 in a bank account in the name of Net Solutions in exchange for common stock. So now, just to refresh your memory, Chris Clark, who is the owner of this new business, decided to deposit $25,000 into his new business. So there are two accounts that are created. One is cash and the other is common stock. Cash is increasing because it's going to be from the company's perspective. Now we have a new amount of cash that's getting invested in the business, so cash is going up. And also we have common stock, which is an equity account, and it's also increasing. And I hope you remember, when, when assets increase, they, recorded, they get recorded on the debit side. And that's why we see cash recorded on the debit side. And then common stock is recorded on the credit side, which is the right-hand right side. So let's follow the steps of recording and transaction. Step number one, we record under the date column here, November 1st, which is the date where this transaction took place. Then step number two, we go under description and we start by recording the debit account or the account to be debited. So you see here, we're going to debit cash under description. We can see it's recorded slightly to the left compared to common stock, which is the account to be credited slightly to the right. So this is how we record debit and credit. We always start with the debit under the description, and then we indent the credit, the common stock. And you can see that cash is debited, and then under the debit column, we record the $25,000. And that's for step, still step number two. In step number three, we record the credit and we indent as, as I said, and then we, under the credit column, we record 25,000. So I'll take a step backward. The journal consists of a date column. We have a description, which is a little bit wider column, and then we have post-reference column, and then we have the debit, and then we have the credit. And of course, on the top, we have the title journal, and then we usually have the page number of the journal, and, and the page numbers go in sequence. So step number four, which is the last step, uh, you, it's actually not the last step, but it's uh, the step before last, we re write down what is this transaction about. So this is an explanation. I always say this is like uh, an optional step where you write something like issued common stock for cash. So just a brief explanation for why this journal entry or what is this, what is this journal entry related to. And then we have step number five, which is still empty here, uh, which is the post-reference column. Once we post the ledger, which is something that we'll see in the, uh, in the next chapter, we're going to uh, record the post-reference. So if we want to see how this is affecting the accounting equation, we see here assets, liabilities, and stockholders equity. So as we said before, cash is increasing, so that's why it's on the debit side, and, and it's recorded here on, on, on the on the debit side, and then under stockholders equity, common stock under stock stockholders equity, and it's recorded on the credit side because it's increasing. So um, this is how a journal entry would be recorded for, for a transaction like that. So you can see cash is increasing, so it goes on the debit, common stock is also increasing, it goes on the credit. So this applies the double entry bookkeeping system where we have something on the debit and another account on the on the credit. So debit and credit should be always balanced. And you can see that, that we recorded the same values. So this is, I think this is a, a chart that shows you how most transactions involving cash uh, would look like. And uh, when we receive cash from service provided, we debit cash and we credit fees earned. And when we have services provided on account, then we debit accounts receivable and we credit fees earned, and so on. So I'll leave that. I, I really don't want you to memorize that, but maybe that can be a good reference for you. But I really like you to see how transactions would look like. Now let's see transaction B. On November 5th, Net Solutions paid 
$20,000 for the purchase of land as a future building site. So a few things that we have to focus on. First, the date. So we record the date under the date column, November 5th. Now let's think about the two accounts that got affected because of these, because of this transaction. We have cash, because they said the word paid here, paid $20,000, so that involves cash. And can anyone think if this is cash paid or received would increase cash or decrease cash? Again, common sense, when we pay cash, that would reduce our cash balance. So cash is going to go down. And then the other account that is going to be affected is land because we bought land for this amount of money. So cash went down, land went up. When an asset goes up, it goes on the debit side. And in this case, we have land is the asset that's going up. So we debited land for $20,000 and cash is going down. It's also an asset. It goes down. So um, it's, it's recorded on the credit side. So remember, when cash is paid, it goes on the credit side. When it's collected, we record it on the debit side. But in this case, we paid cash, so that's why it's recorded on the credit side. And land is recorded on the debit side. So let's see how this affects account equation. So you can see we debited land because land went up. It increased. So we debited on November 5th on the debit side here for $20,000. Cash, because it's paid, so it went down, it decreased, so we recorded on the credit side. And both of these are assets. So one asset went up, another asset went down. One asset got debited, the other asset got credited. And by the way, both of these accounts, we call them balance sheet accounts because both of them are assets and, and assets are balance sheet accounts. Let's see transaction C. On November 10th, Net Solutions purchased supplies on account for $13.50. So you see here, purchase supplies on account. Does that mean that they paid in cash or they promised to pay the cash in the future? Once we see the word on account, this means that cash was not part of this transaction. So it was on account. So we purchased these supplies, but we didn't pay for them up front. So supplies is one of those accounts that are affected but the other account is not cash it's actually accounts payable so accounts payable is a liability account a liability account we just recorded uh, to show that we have an obligation to pay this in the future so let's try to think about it did supply go up or down of course supplies went up because it's an asset right it went up by 1350 and that's why because it's an asset we are going to record it on the debit side how about accounts payable? Accounts payable also went up. Accounts payable also went up, but it's a liability. And liabilities, when they go up, they, record, they get recorded on the credit side. So one thing also for you to remember, when we have a transaction, always, always expect that one account would be on the debit side and the other account is going to be on the credit side. So if I'm sure about one account, the other account should be easy because we can expect where it should be recorded. So if I know that supplies is an asset and it went up, but I'm not quite sure how accounts payable should be recorded, without thinking too much, you know that accounts payable has to be on the credit side. Because every single transaction, based on the double entry bookkeeping system, we should have a debit and a credit with the same value. Now let's see transaction D. On November 18th, Net Solutions received cash of 7,500 from customers for services provided. So received cash. So cash is an asset and it's going up. When we receive cash, it goes up and we have to record that on the debit side. So I hope you can always relate to cash in an easy way. So when cash is increasing, we debit it. When cash is decreasing, we credit it. In this case, we received cash, so cash is increasing. So we're going to debit cash for 7,500 and then we credit the reason we received this cash, which is fees earned, which is a revenue. That's an income statement account, by the way. Cash is a balance sheet account. Fees earned is an income statement account. It's a revenue account. So it, revenues, they like the credit size, side when they increase. And that's why we have them uh, on the credit side here. So if you see how it affected the accounting equation, cash went up, so it increased. And that's why we recorded on the debit side. Fees earned also increased. Okay, and it has an indirect effect on stockholders' equity, but it's directly affecting revenue. 
So when it goes up, fees earned or revenue, they like the credit side, and that's why it's recorded on the credit side. So one account debit, the other account credit. Let's see transaction E. Transaction E is unique because now it's not only two accounts, it's more than two accounts. So we have on November 30th, which is almost the end of the month, it's actually the end of the month, Net Solutions incurred the following expenses. They paid wages, they paid rent, they paid utilities, and they also paid miscellaneous expenses. Remember, I told you miscellaneous expenses is the account where we that we use whenever we really don't care to record um, a specific expenditure in a in a specific category. We just combine them all together in something called miscellaneous expense. So something that's not very important for us for uh, to be classified in a separate category. Something like, for example, um, shipping or maybe uh, some kind of um, like minor expenses that we incur that we really don't see happening often. So we, we just put them all together in this account called miscellaneous expense. So in this, in this case, we paid. So we expect that the cash is going to go down. And when cash goes down, it goes on the credit side. It gets recorded on the credit side. All these expenses are increasing and expenses, they like the debit side. So all of them should be recorded on the debit side. And this is why we listed wages expense, rent expense, utilities expense, miscellaneous expense, all together on the debit side. And then their total is credited for cash. And then we have this brief explanation where we say paid expenses. So how did this affect the accounting equation? You can see that all these expenses went up one at, at a time, and the total affected cash by having cash going down. So full, all, all four expenses or expense accounts increased, but cash is the only account that decreased. It's an asset, it goes on the credit side. Now let's see another transaction, transaction F. On November 30th, Net Solutions paid creditors on account. I hope by now we know these kind of keywords, paid. Once we see the word paid, we know that this is cash. And cash is going to go down, so it's going to be credited. And why did we pay for? We paid cash to settle our account balance, or, or in other words, our accounts payable. So accounts payable is going to go down because we are paying our creditors for the things that we bought on account. How much are we going to pay them? We're going to pay them $950. So cash is going to be credited and accounts payable is going to be debited. Why, why am I debiting accounts payable? Accounts payable is a liability. It likes the credit side, but it's decreasing. Once it's decreasing, it goes opposite to its nature. So it goes on the debit side. And again, cash is easy. Whenever we are paying for cash, it goes on the credit side. When we receive cash, it goes on the debit side. So we start with accounts payable. Accounts payable is going down, so we debit it. And then cash is also going down, so it's all it, it gets credited. So we have debit accounts payable, credit cash. Let's see transaction G. Net Solutions purchased 1350 of supplies on November 10th. Chris Chris Clark determined that the cost of supplies on hand on November 30 was $550. Therefore, $800 worth of supplies must have been used during November. So remember, Chris Clark purchased $1,350 worth of supplies. By the end of the month, the leftovers were $550. So we need to figure out how much worth of supplies have been used during the month of November. So we simply see how much we had at the very beginning, how much is our leftovers, and the difference is the amount of our supplies expense. And we need to record that in the journal entry at the end of the month. So it turned out to be $800. Be careful because we're going to have two supplies accounts. One is supplies, which is an asset, and the other one is supplies expense, which is an expense account that belongs to the income statement. So supplies is a balance sheet account, Supplies expense is an income statement account. So supplies is actually being used. So it has to go down and it's an asset. So when it goes down, it goes on on the credit side. Supplies expense, it's an expense account. It's an income statement account. 
it's actually increasing because we use more supplies. So supplies when they, or supplies expense, when it gets used, it gets recorded on the debit side. So that's why you see supplies expense on the debit side, $800, and then we indent the credit, which is supplies, for another $800. One thing I also want to stress on is that we always, always record the debit first, and then we record the credit. Always, always, on the journal entry. We cannot do credit and then debit. That doesn't work. We always record the debit and then the credit. Even if I'm thinking credit first and then, and I know the credit, no, I have to start with debit and then record the credit. In some cases, I see students, like, they know the credit, so they, they skip a line or, or two, and then they record the credit, and then they think about what should be debited, and then they go back and debit the value or the other account. So in this case, we're going to start with supplies expense because that's the account that increased and expenses increase on the debit side, okay? And then supplies is used, it's an asset, it's, it goes down, so that's why it's credited on or recorded on the credit side. Now let's see the last transaction, transaction H. So on November 30th, dividends of $2,000 were paid. Again, the key word is paid. Once we see paid, I'm thinking cash. And cash is actually going down, so it has to be credited. So I'm going to credit cash. Remember, dividend starts with the letter D, and this is why it's going to be on the debit side. Of course, that's not the reason, but dividends, they have a debit nature. Whenever they increase, they get recorded on the debit. So we're going to debit dividends because it's going up, and we're going to credit cash because it's going down. Okay, so we debit dividends and then we credit cash. All right, so I'll stop here. And again, in the next video, we're going to practice more.